Hey my friends, Sean Tierney coming to you from the studios at theautomationschool.com. In today's episode of The Automation Show, we're going to try to get our Factory Talk of USC project to communicate to a PLC via DF1 as well as to our DH45 network. But before we do, I first want to say a thank you to all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation for their monthly pledges that help us make our shows even better and better. And if you would prefer to pick up some swag, we have new merchandise available over at theautomationblog.com forward slash shop, including t-shirts, coffee cups, phone cases, and more. So with all that said, let's go over to the computer here. And you can see I am in the program or the project from the last episode. I'm going to go ahead and stop this display. Let's save it. Oh, it's saved. That's good. And let's take a look at what we can do with Factory Talk links here. So I'm going to go in the communication setup. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can add a driver. Now, I have COM port 1. I have, that's a built-in COM port to my uh, desktop. I have that go into the KF3. COM port 3 is my USBS. So let me try COM port 3. That's going directly to my PLC5. So let's do that. So we'll do a serial DF1. We'll tell it's COM port 3. And we'll leave everything else defaults to see if it works. Okay, it says it's working. Let's expand it. And hey, there's my PLC5. Great. Okay, that worked. So let's go ahead while we're here, we'll create a shortcut for that. I'm going to call it PLC5, and I'll call it, it's Factory Talk Links now, FL. And um, yeah, I think that's all we have to do. DF1 maybe, Put DF1 at the end there. Okay, and apply. Yes. Okay, now the next thing I want to try to do is my DH45. Now I don't have a PKTX cut, I'm actually hunting for one affordable they're all over 200 dollars up on uh, on online so i'm looking for an affordable one maybe under 50 bucks so don't have one yet and uh but uh let's see if we can use our um kf3 so i'm going to come up here and well if i try to add another serial right you can see here that there's nothing i can change to make it use a KF3. So if I come in here and add another driver and choose DH45, it's looking for a PKTX or an RN6 if it was a panel view plus. And again, it doesn't say, you know, jumper right there. It doesn't say COM port. So I don't know what to do here. There's nothing I could do. If I, if I tried to make this uh, COM port one, jumper ID and COM port, they're, they're not the same thing. So let me go ahead and hit click on that, and uh, we'll get some errors down here. Fatal error, can't connect to the PKTX. That's a PKTX driver, not a driver for um, a KF3. So we'll yank that back out of there. So, well, at least I get this guy done. Let me hit OK to save that. And let's go back to RS Links Classic to do the KF3. So we'll close down this guy, and what we'll do is we will create a topic. And, you know, I'll just go into topic configuration. And, oh, you know what? I need to add the driver first. So I'll go in, uh, let's see, communications, configure drivers, DF1, but it's the KF3. So let me auto configure that. It's on COM1. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. Now I should see my DH45 network. You see all my micros up there? Get a couple of control logics, compact logics, and all my micros. I didn't put the 503 in. I got the. I'm leaving the 504 in there. Um, but in any case, we'll we'll talk to. Let's let's talk to. I think we did the 1200 last time um, when we were doing RSV 32. So let's do the 1000. We'll right click, create a new DD OPC topic, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ML10. Uh, this will be, I, I'm not really going through the gateway, so I'll just call it ML10 DH485. Okay, let's go in there, and I always change the data collection to 100 milliseconds. Again, 250 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds is great. 
you know, you'll still have that one second round trip from the time you press a button to the time whatever you're turning on comes on. But, um, you know, if you go any slower than that, your operators may not think the, the screen's working. Now, if you can't see what's happening or if it's a temperature setting or something like that, it, it doesn't matter because it wouldn't change really fast. But um, I like 100 milliseconds. We're working on the bench here, so we'll apply that. Yes. Okay. And now let's create one more. We'll do it in here. We'll call it the ML. Let's do the 1500. The H45. Go there. 100 milliseconds. Apply. Now you can see these locks here. That means I'm already using those, right? From the last episode, we set those up through the gateway. So that's why you see those padlocks there. All right. So we're done in here. Let's go back to factory talk. And we're going to want to create some tags because those are legacy PLCs, right? We could, we could directly browse to them, directly reference them, but the, whoever's editing the screen would have a hard time knowing what N7 or F8 is, you know? So we'll create some tags. Let's create some new folders here. We'll create one for the ML10. And we'll create another one for the ML15. And I'll uh, go input some tags here. Let's see. I want to bring them in from my ML. Yeah, we'll do this. Studio B. And seven because this is the code from my Factory Talk View course. I uh, all my molding machines are in 750 through N799, and so that's what I'll bring in. Ah, very important though. I get this right. This RS Links shortcut, or RS Links topic in our case, that has to be right because that's going to be part of the address for every single one of these tags. So what did I call it? Do you remember? I called it. Well, ML10 DH45. ML10 DH485. Okay. Let's go in the right folder. Well, everything looks good there. There they are. Okay, great. All right, we'll go with it at 15. We'll repeat this. Except that this is going to be ML15. DH485. Um, I'm going to choose the 1500 program even though they're identical. I'll just go through that step. The filter stays in there from last time. Oh, let's see, N750 through 99. Everything's looking good. Hope I don't make a typo. And voila. Okay, so we got our tags. Now, last but not least, we can go do our graphic display. And at this point, let me uh, copy and paste this a couple times. Okay. I'll select them all using the uh, control key. We'll align them all to the top. We'll even space them. The first thing we'll do here is we'll rename this. This is going to be our Micrologix 1000 via DF DH485. Look at that. There we go. Much better. Okay. And I'll change this first tag to B. Let's refresh all folders. Again, we could direct reference and go right to N7, whatever. But, you know, it's better to have a tag on the screen so when you're doing your HMI development, you can see what's going on. In this case, though, I am going to go to our tags. Let's see here. Mold speed 1. Really, the only thing that changed there was the ML10. All right, so let's take that. We'll come in here. Paste that in. And one more time. Now, while I'm doing this in-place editing, I can actually do a Control-A to select everything in there and recenter them. Okay, so... Let's come over here. We'll change this guy. This is going to be my ML15 DH485. And now we know enough that it's just going to be ML15. Okay. 
And one more. Okay. Okay, let's uh, center those. Okay, now I did also have my Factory Talk links, right, to my PLC5 via DF1. PLC5 FL DF1. So we need another set here. Let's go back to my screen. Copy paste. So this will be the PLC5 via DF1. Okay. And be, I can't really put the tags in yet because, yeah, let me select all these, align the top, even space. Okay. Because I haven't brought, did the tags. So let's go back in here. We'll create another PLC5 folder. This time we'll call it PLC5 DF1. Okay. We'll input those tags. Um, let's see here. There we go. And 750 through 99. Oh, and the shortcut was PLC5 Fract Took Links DF1. That's very important. Okay, so we'll bring those in now. Excellent. So now that that's done, we can put those in here. So, what's the address for those? Refresh all folders. Again, we don't want to go directly to the PLC5. We'll use the tags. And I still have my filter there, which makes it easy. So, ooh, and look at <laughs> This is something I really don't like about uh, the software, but it, it, uh, it inserts it wherever your cursor was. So you can see I get this junk here, and this junk here. I got to get rid of. Okay. So let's copy this folder, control C, and we'll fix these. Two more to go. Almost there. Last one. Okay. Now here's the moment of truth. Did we do everything right? So let's see here. Sometimes we, you lose your toolbar. Let's see if we can pull something else up and then go back to the, there we go. Now the toolbars are back. Maximize, play test. Come on, baby, you can do it. I made a typo. I can see it down here. I made a typo. Let me stop the screen. I forgot to put a five. If we go look at those tags, Look at every one of them don't have the PLC5 FL DF1. So what's the easiest way to fix that? Well, we'll go back into Fact Chalk Links. A lot of people know you can rename these. You can. You just have to click on it twice slowly. There we go. We'll take the five out. Okay. Um, okay, just hit OK. Let's see if that does it. Ah, we lost our toolbars again. Come on, baby. Come on back. Finally, they came back. Okay. So that's why it's important you get that RS Links topic or shortcut name correctly or Factory Talk Links shortcut correctly. Otherwise, it won't work. And all your tags, I brought in like 50 tags. They all had the wrong uh, shortcut, so I had to change it. You know, inside of Factory Talk Links to make it match what I imported. Otherwise, I could have deleted all the tags and just re-imported them. But with that, that's how you go about using um, Factory Talk View Studio with DF1. We had no problem with that. That was no problem. We just went out our serial port or our USBS, and we're able to do that without an issue. But when it came to our KF3, there's no driver for that. We don't have a PKTX card, so we're using a KF3. That's through a serial port, but even though Factory Talk View and Factory Talk Links have a serial port driver, it's DF1 only. It won't do the DF1 to DH45 bridging device, the KF3. So we, we get around that, right? We just used RS Links Classic like we did in the previous episode and made some um, topics and uh, everything's working great. And because we're using Factory Talk View, 
we don't need an RS Lynx Classic license. Unlike RS View 32, where you have to buy RS View 32 bundled with RS Lynx Classic to get them to talk to each other, Factory Talk View works with Factory Talk Lynx, RS Lynx Enterprise, or RS Lynx Classic, and you don't need a license for the RS Lynx or Factory Talk Lynx or RS Lynx Classic. They just work with Factory Talk View as long as you have a license for Factory Talk View. And with that, that's the end of this episode. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And if you know anybody who's looking for a Factory Talk VUSE training, I have an awesome course over at theautomationschool.com that covers Factory Talk VUSE soup to nuts. We, we really, we cover, um, you know, everything from, uh, you know, what it is to building an entire project. You know, we use a lot of parameters. We use um, global objects and just, I try to put everything into it. Now it is a, station project that's not a distributor project that'll probably be something i do in the future but uh, if you know anybody looking for that or any of my other courses you can see them all over here control logics compact logics micro logics micro 800 panel view plus for usc and ccw with vfds and with that uh, i do want to say thank you to all our patrons i'll put their names here um thank you very much for uh, for supporting us over at patreon.com forward slash automation um if you don't know, our patrons get early access to these videos. They get free downloads. They get insider news and a bunch of other stuff too. So that's patreon.com forward slash automation. Another way you can support us though is by picking up some of our new swag. These are uh, shirts and cups and phones that I've designed myself. And uh, I would love to have you pick some up. Uh, they're trying to keep them very reasonably priced. We didn't add a lot to the, the cost of each uh, item just so they were very affordable. But still, we get a little bit from each purchase. So if you see anything you like, please uh, pick it up over at theautomationblog.com forward slash shop. And with that, I just want to thank you for watching. I want to wish you all a very happy and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.